Okay, um, in this video, basically what I want to do is I want to give a, another little brief intro video, which is a brief, in, a brief introduction to deconstruction, um, de deconstructionism. Um, this is a, basically a system of philosophy, uh, if you want to call it a system, um, created by Jacques Derrida, who um, basically, um, I'm going to give I'm gonna show you a couple books to read here, which is a really, some really, really good ones. Speech of Phenomena um, has a lot of essays which in it which um, kind of critique the phenomenology of Edmund Husserl. Um, he kind of kind of um, was influenced by phenomenology and um, you know kind of had a lot of criticisms to it. And this book um, is a lot of that. It also has the essay in the back, which is called um, "The Ferrance." Let me show you this. This is an awesome essay, like to get a like a crash course on de on de de deconstructionism. Deconstructionism. I think this is a great essay for that. Um, now the book is of grammatology. Um, this is per or published in the sim in the same time period as the speech of phenomena. It was um, another good one. Writing in difference. Um, another good one. Dissemination, which has the essay called Plato's Pharmacy in it, another awesome one. And this is a book which is not by Jacques Derrida, but it's by Jean-Luc Nancy. Um, he was a deconstructionist following Derrida, and there are a lot of um, deconstructionists who followed him. So um, let's get in, getting into it. Um, deconstruction, um, I'm just going to call it deconstruction without the ism. Um, now, um, basically, it's has to, it's a, like kind of a system of philosophy. Derrida wouldn't call it a concept or a system or a method. Um, personally, um, if you want to read a, another like a secondary work about, about Derrida, Christopher Norris, he's a really good one. I think he um, kind of thinks about deconstruction as a method. And I would think th think the same way, but um, to kind of look at this as, as a method might be um, be uh, against the whole concept of it, if you want to call it a concept, because he calls he doesn't like to refer to anything as a concept or a method or anything that is like a an actual meaningful thing. And I'm gonna get to why that is here. Um, deconstruction or deconstructionism is kind of if this whole thing is is applied to any kind of philosophy, it's a breakdown of conceptual opposites. Um, often thought of as a breakdown of binary conceptual opposites, but um, I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as just a breakdown of conceptual opposites because there could be many, um, many differing um, positions that are against one another, and the whole. Um, the whole reason, or the whole agenda of this is to break those down. Um, and I have, for example, dualism and monism in the, in the philosophy of mind. And I guess we have a dualist who has, like, I'm just, this is just an example to kind of show you what this is going to do. Um, we, have a, we have a dualist over here who um, has his whole arguments and cases for why he thinks... Um, we are of soul and body. Um, he thinks he's right. He thinks he thinks his philosophy is totally correct. And then we have the monist, or the physicalist, or the or the materialist on the other side, who also has his arguments and his reasons and his cases as to why monism, thus that we are of one substance, is true. Um, and they both argue back and forth, and they both find truth and meaning and presence in and presence in, in what they in what they believe. So, deconstruction, to break down these conceptual opposites, these are two conceptual opposites, dualism and, and monism. To break those down, um, it's like to, to break dualism down, would be to, to recognize that to, be, to break dualism down, we would find a trace in it, and we, 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 would, find, we would find monism there. And to break, to break monism down, we would find dualism. And... Um, Trace. What is meant by trace? Trace is just that um, 
when you um, break down, it, when you deconstruct a concept, uh, when you break down a concept, break down presence, um, you find the trace of the opposite concept. So we have the two concepts, presence and absence. So I'm going to use the concept um, by uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, who's a existentialist philosopher, who has a concept uh, about uh, negation and and uh, nothingness. But that's different. I'm just going to use his example to understand this. I'm kind of trying trying to make to make trace understanding as to how as to how opposing concepts are connected to one another. Um, Pierre, I got. A guy named Pierre is sitting in a is or a, a guy is sitting in a cafe waiting for his friend waiting for his friend Pierre. He's supposed to be at the cafe at a certain time and he's not he means he's not there. So if you are waiting for your friend at the at the cafe, you are noticing his not being there, his his absence. So you are noticing the presence of the of the, of the chairs, the presence of the of of, of, of the cafe. But the absence up here, so you can find how absence is, is, is contained in presence, and how presence is contained in absence, and how if you were to break down the concept of absence, you would find their presence, and you, it's almost like a turning inside out of concepts. Um, that's the way I like to think of it, because if you turn presence inside out, you will have absence. Turning absence inside out, you will find presence. So, trace is... When you break down or deconstruct a concept, you will find a trace of the opposite one. Or and I have a lot. I have a good. I have a video which is just about, which is just all about this whole concept. And um, I have a playlist which is called deconstructionism. And um, if you want more in depth discussion about these concepts, um, you can you can go there. I'm just, here I'm trying to give a very brief introduction, if that's possible, because this is a very, very complex, um, very, very complex um, kind of philosophy. And I think it would help to even possibly understand this at all, to have some kind of understanding of phenomenology and some kind of grasp of continental philosophy uh, prior to, um, prior to 1950 or, 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 or 1960. So, and again, if this doesn't make sense to you. I tell, I say this in, in in every video about this about this stuff. If this doesn't make sense to you, I have two things to say to, to, to say to you. Either comment below, and I will respond to you and try to talk to you more through it. Or there there might be other things to read on the internet. Well, there, there are there are other things to read to read on on the internet, and other videos to watch of people who are trying to explain this and what they are saying their way of explaining it might click for you so um, the way I the way I'm explaining it might not work might, might not work for you our brains are all different so m moving on I'm gonna dial backward to this concept called deference um, deference is a non-word non-concept he says in the essay called deference uh, this is an essay actually and it's also a non-word and non a non-word and non-concept um, but it's the root is the word to differ. Um, the word di difference and difference to us, they look like they're pronounced differently, but in, in the in the French language, they are pronounced the same. What, but he puts an a, if you notice difference, if you notice the a here. They're gonna put the word put the letter a here instead instead of the e. To show that there to to he actually did this on purpose and he did it to um to kind of show the um difference in similarity so we also have the concept of same and difference which i'll try to explain here in the essay called difference difference um he tries to explain the concept of same and how so, like the, the the concept of same and difference is similar to the concept of presence, of presence and absence. How you can turn same inside out, or try to um, deconstruct or break down same, and you'll find difference. Same thing here. 
and break down difference, and you will find the same. Um, so, so he did this little. He, he put the letter A in here because you, in the French language, you can't hear the difference of spelling between the difference, the regular way it's spelled, and the way he spells it. So the, 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 these are also two different things, but he did this to show that there's sameness and difference. Um, so différence with the A breaks down to difference and, and deferral. This is still pronounced as différence in the, in the French language. Difference to differ um, means that everything differs from itself and that um, basically, um, you know, there isn't any kind of real meaning or any kind of real truth or um, real anything and, and that everything differs from itself and um, that will always be, be the way it is and that will always kind of, you know, and also there's a deferral um, where having a solidified meaning, we will always defer finding that meaning until infinity. We will always delay, I know the words for this is delay. And another way to think about these two, this is somewhat un somewhat an an analogous to space. And this is somewhat analogous to time. Because um, within time, getting our meaning, our true presence or meaning will delay into, in, into infinity. And you will try to grasp for real truth or real meaning and you, it will constantly be slipping away from you and you will never find it. Um, and the difference, basically everything differing from itself. So the concept, the concept of the same, um, basically um, the way um, we have, um, let's say we have x, um, we have um, x, y, and z put in a set, and we have W at here who isn't, who isn't put in this set. X, Y, and Z are put in this set based upon their, their similarities. So these are same. However, these are recognized as different as to how, as to how Y is, or as to how W is not put in the, as, as to how, as to how W is not put in this set. So, um, just like any, same thing with being and, um, non-being. Um, it's basically um, it, the ways in which things are the same is to, has to how why is the same to other things as to, how, as to how it is different from others. Sameness and difference can be found like if you deconstruct same you'll find difference. Deconstructing difference you will find sameness. Um, now if you want a really good um, explanation of difference and same um, this essay um, the Ferrance is uh, probably the best thing to read and I think this is a, just a great little pickup right there if you want to understand this however Derrida is very difficult to read um, I would highly recommend uh, possibly picking up secondary works on Derrida by Norris and and, and others. Um, so again, if you don't understand this, these concepts here and as to how you know we find that the trace of difference and same, and how we find the trace of same and difference, and how we find a trace of being in non-being, how we find a trace of non-being and being, and how we find traces of presence and in, in absence, and how we find traces of absence and presence. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to these here. So if you don't get everything I've explained, uh, you I have I have other, I have other videos where I kind of explain these things, or you can kind or or you, you can comment below and I will try to explain. Um, next we have two things here which are very important. Um, these are two kind of I guess crimes that he says um, that most of Western philosophy, Plato or Hegel. Now, um, in, um, in this book, Dissemination, there's a, uh, article, or there's a thing called, uh, Plato's Pharmacy, um, which he kind of, 
he kind of bashes Plato's philosophy and uses the term pharmacia or pharmacon and kind of gives many many meanings for those for those terms um, and kind of does a similar things with that with that but logocentrism is kind of if you were to have an, an opinion of dualism or have a, a have an have an opinion of a certain realism or have a certain opinion about something then you were staunch in that in that opinion and you are centering and you are centering your philosophy around a certain opinion or a certain belief that you think is true and meaningful and ultimately pre and, and ultimately like a true a true thing that is logos lo that is logos in, in that in that in that you are you are centering your your your, your philosophy um, you are centering things um, on a certain thing or on a certain belief say dualism that that you think is ultimately true ultimately me meaningful and right um, De deconstruction does a decentering of all of philosophy decentering in that we don't take a stance on what is meaningful we don't we don't take a stance on what is true we go from one we go from one conceptual opposite to the other and back and forth back and forth it's kind of a call a marginalizing back and forth where we never solidify in a, in a meaning or a truth um, metaphysics of presence is is, a, is another crime he puts on on people like Plato. Plato has a, if you if you know about Plato's philosophy, he has a kind of forms or Plato's heaven, um, where he kind of has an abstract things that exist, and where where he um, he sort of kind of um, states that we have. Kind of the form of the form of the good or the or the form of beauty. Um, also, Hegel has the absolute. Leibniz has his has his monads, or even talking about like tropes or properties or universals. Having some kind of um, ontology or metaphysics um, about what you think is the present, the present true thing. It's called metaphysics of presence because you are. Doing philosophy, which is a metaphysics, trying to say the way things are truly, the way, um, you know, if you if you have a philosophy of forms or of the absolute or of monads, you are having a, you are, you are having, you are having a um, ontological c commitment and you are stating that, well, existence is in such and su is in such and such a way and you are saying that, that truth is in monads. Meaning and truth is in monads, or meaning and, or meaning and truth is, is, in, is in forms. Derrida says no, and that's, in, in that, and that's wrong. Having any kind of truth or meaningfulness or presence at all, so, like solid presence that, you know, is totally like having any, having any kind of forms or anything is wrong. So, again, I have a video about it. I have videos about all, well, all this stuff, which is about, which are which is more specific, and more in depth. So um, about writing, writing and speech. This is another big one. This book is a great one to go to if you want to learn about his writing and speech stuff of grammatology. Um, Derrida responds to to the structuralists like. Ferdinand is so sure, or um, Claude, or Claude Levi Strauss, um, and others, who kind of um, they have some kind of um, they, th and I forget which one thinks what, but they think that either writing um, gets more meaning in language, like if you that uh, writing uh, delivers more truth and meaning than speech does um and i put R rousseau here because in of grammatology he goes against Socher and rousseau and levi levi strauss who um they either i forget who says what but they they either say that that writing that writing reveals more of what truth of, or writing reveals more truth or 
speech reveals more more truth. They say either that if we say things, if we say things, that speech will reveal more of what our thoughts are, or speech will uh, reveal more um, more truth or meaning than writing does, or writing things um, will will give more truth or meaning. And he kind of puts logocentrism on these guys, and also metaphysical, the uh, metaphysical presence as well, on those guys. And he develops a term which is called art writing, which is writing that goes outside of all these things. And I have a video about this as well, which goes which goes outside of it, outside of these things, and um, tries to tries to go, tries to, to to go beyond all these little constructions. So, finally, literature and philosophy. And I'm sorry that this this video is long, but um, literature and, and philosophy. People following him, well, people following him, the deconstructionists following Derrida, kind of um, kind of separate into the the the, 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 the the deconstructionists of literature and the de and the deconstructionists of philosophy. Those who are deconstructionists of literature try to write things on how to de how to de de how to deconstruct um, like novels and and uh, poems and try to break down um, having a, a solid meaning in say let's say you're reading a novel uh, by uh, uh, Charles Dickens. Well, let's, let's say you're reading um, Great uh, Great Expectations or uh, Don Quixote, um, and you think and you think that there's and, and everybody in the literature world has a solidified meaning for what this poem means or what Don Quixote means or what the whole novel is trying to do, and the de the the, de the, de the deconstructionists of literature are trying to break that down and try to break down having a solidified meaning in literature. The de the deconstructionists of philosophy are doing this are, do are doing the same thing but with philosophy. People like uh John Luke Dancy. Being singular being singular plural, an awesome book I think. Um yeah, I'll, I'll write that down here. Jean Luc Nancy. Um, there are others too, um, yeah, um, they do different things, but it just, some, some do the deconstruction in literature and some do it in philosophy, and they are doing the similar concepts, the similar methods, just doing, in, they split apart into different ways or different things that they're doing, that they're, they're, that they're applying the method to. So, um, that has been my 23 minute, um, intro to this. It's very, very deep and complex, which is why I feel like it's, it's necessary to, to do, to go so in depth here. However, if you think I've messed something up or if you think, or he, or he, or if you think I've left something out or, or if you have a question, please comment below. Uh, I also have many other videos on this, on, on this topic, um, and I would love to even just discuss with you in the comments as well. Um, and yeah, whenever whenever you comment, I get an email and I all I like totally know right away, and I will and I'll and I will respond if your comment is of some sort of purpose. Um, thank you for watching.